Uh, greetings, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland. I think I need to turn up the light here. Okay, make it a lot brighter. There we go. So, um, I'm standing opposite number nine Belgrave Square. You see that uh, black door behind me? See how tall the building is? So this is one of the most expensive squares in the United Kingdom. I'm in London. So number nine Belgrave Square was the um, London residence of uh, Lord Bally Edmund. So Lord Bally Edmund, his surname was actually Hockey, H-A-U-G-H-E-Y. And now in Ireland, we usually pronounce it Hockey, but apparently his family pronounced it Hockey, like the sport. So uh, he was born in uh, Dundalk, County Louth. That's a town in the Republic of Ireland. He grew up in an ordinary family without a great deal of money. He went to a Christian Brothers school. Uh, the Christian Brothers um, is, a, is an order of Catholic priests who seem to have educated about half the boys in Ireland. So um, he was born in 1944. And so when he, when he finished school, it was a time when Ireland was not doing well economically. It was one of the poorest countries uh, in Western Europe. I know overall Western Europe is quite a wealthy region of the world. Anyway, he emigrated to the United States. <clears throat> he spent several years there. I don't think he became an American citizen. I could be mistaken. Then he returned to Ireland and he became an entrepreneur. He then set up a, a pharmaceutical manufacturing uh, uh, company. And you might have thought that uh, looking at the tea leaves, the situation did not uh, all go well for um, manufacturing. But anyway, he made it work. Bear in mind, this is the time of the troubles. Um, in the late 70s, Dundalk is very close to the border. And the 70s was sometimes nicknamed El Paso, as in a border town, it was kind of lawless. It was a well-known jumping off point for the, uh, for the IRA, who was sometimes drinking in the pubs of the town and bragging about it. So he came from a Catholic family. Um, I don't think he was nationalist at that stage. I don't think he was unionist either. Not terribly political, far more interested in making his fortune. So he got married uh, in the early 70s. I think his wife was English, but I could be, could be wrong about that. He had three children. Um, uh, a daughter and two sons. His el eldest daughter is a prominent criminal barrister. He went to Trinity College, Dublin. Um, and then his, um, his son, uh, Edward, is just a, just a year ahead of me at school. And he also went to Trinity College, Dublin. And he also qualified as a barrister in England. Um, but he doesn't practice anymore. He's a, he's a businessman as well. But anyway, um, so uh, Lord Bally Edmund, he became um, very wealthy, um, a multimillionaire, one of the richest people in Ireland. He owned this place here and he owned an estate in Norfolk, about 100 miles north of here, he used to commute by helicopter. Um, so um, he was well known uh, in both sides of the border and he managed to maintain cordial relations with unionists and nationalists and that was no easy feat in the 90s when the conflict was still on. So when it came to the Good Friday Agreement, uh, he was instrumental behind the scenes in persuading Ulster unionists, most of them, to go along with it, convincing them that it was in their long-term interests. And indeed they did. So uh, he formed a, quite a rapport with um, Lord Trimble, David Trimble, who was then leader of the Ulster Unionist Party, uh, really um, an embattled leader. And uh, later he was ennobled. He became a Conservative peer, Lord Bally Edmund. And indeed he donated um, large sums of money to the Conservative and Unionist Party, which made him a... Um, a uh, figure of well, some contention around there. People thought, some people thought this was terrible. The, you know, a Catholic should never be a unionist and blah, blah, blah. He also was appointed to the Shannard, as in the Senate of the Republic of Ireland, um, by Bertie Ahern, the Taoiseach at the time. So um, he was, um, what's the word? A very private man, even though he was involved in politics. Didn't give interviews, did not seek the limelight, just did good, um, really, um, as, as quietly as possible. There was no Pharisee like that. Um, so that's him. That's why he was ennobled and became uh, Lord Bally Edmund. But uh, because he didn't the Conservative Party, he was presumably a, a unionist like that. Um, and um, he was one of the first peers to be appointed to the Irish Senate since the 1920s. Well, I think the first one. Anyway, he um, unfortunately died in a helicopter crash um, uh, a couple of years ago. And um, the, the contents of his house were, were sold off. You can see the video by Sotheby's, the auction house, um, just how magnificent the furniture was. There are really awe-striking images of uh, the, the splendid objet d'art he had. So that is Lord Bally Edmund. I'm not sure if the family still owns it. And the place in, in, in Norfolk, if I got it right, it was Holcomb Hall, something like that. Okay, so uh, I shall switch it off now.